الحمد لله على إنعامه والشكر له على تفضله وامتنانه ولا إله إلا الله تعظيما لشأنه وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على خير خلقه محمد وعلى آله وإخوانه أما بعد Today I dedicate this khutbah to men the greatest of them who walked on the face of this earth after the prophets and the messengers of Allah and when we talk about men we need to emphasize here that not every male person is a man kullu dhakarin kullu rajulin dhakar wa laysa kullu dhakarin rajul every man is male but not every male person is a man and that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he referred to the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said rijal men this man they grew up and they were brought up under the watchful eyes of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he taught them, he shaped them, and above all, he was their role model in everything in this life. And besides that, they had ambitions. They had huge aspirations. Aspirations that reaches and touches the sky. No, it goes to the highest of stars, and it, it goes beyond that to the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَكُنْ رَجُلًا رِجْلُهُ فِي الثَّرَى وَهِمَّةُ هَمَّتِهِ فِي الثُرَيَّةِ As Shawqi said, Be a person whose feet, even now firmly on the ground, but their aspiration reaches out to above the stars. These companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they changed the face of human history. And that is why, Human history could not ignore them. It preserved for them a special mention. And you need to ask yourself, how many human beings lived on the face of this earth? Millions. So many there are that nobody can count them except Allah Azza wa Jal. But how many are recognized in the books of history? How many did history mention in order to eternalize them? N not many. Why? Because history is very stingy. It only recognizes people who have left their fingerprints, people who have left basamat, and they have left a legacy that will never be forgotten. So how much, wallahi, it gave me joy and happiness in my heart. Some weeks ago, when I walked into this masjid in the city of Johannesburg, perhaps it was my first time in this masjid, I do not recall. But I entered this masjid and I looked around and something amazing caught my attention. Inside the masjid, it is huge. It is beautiful. The masjid is supported by pillars. And on the pillars of the masjid are written names. Shuhada'u Badr and Shuhada'u Uhud. The martyrs who fell in the battle of Badr. And the martyrs of the Sahaba who fell in the battle of Uhud. I said, Wallahi, this is nothing but recognition. That had it been, had it not been for this man who sacrificed their lives, would Islam be in Johannesburg, in the southern part of this continent? If the Sahabas had not sacrificed their lives for deen, would we be here praying in this masjid, in this city? No, we would not. So it befits their honor that people should know who they are. And when I looked around, I recognized those beautiful names. From the martyrs of Badr, Ubaidat ibn al-Harith, Umair ibn Abi Waqqas, 
وسعيد بن خيثمة وعمير بن الحمام وحارث بن سراقة and from the back, martyrs of Uhud Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib, Sayyid al-Shuhada wa Abdullah ibn Jahsh wa Mus'ab ibn Umair wa Shammas ibn Uthman wa Anas ibn Nadar wa Sa'ad ibn Rabi' wa Abdullah ibn Amr wa Amr ibn Jamuh wa Hanzalah ibn Wabi'am the man that was washed by the Malaika. He was given the honorary title, Ghasil al-Malaika. When he died and he was martyred, none other than the angels of Allah washed his body. Amir ibn Fuhayra. They could not find his body after the war. And they looked for him everywhere until the Prophet wasallam disclosed his whereabouts. لقد أنزل لقد أنزل عليين ورفعته الملائكة. That Amr ibn Fuhayra was buried by the angels of Allah, and his soul it went straight to Allah subhanahu wa taala. Don't tell me about Messi and CR7. How لا لا يسون عند الله جناح بعوضة. They have no value in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa taala. Yet our children memorize their names. Not long ago, I traveled on a bus with the youngsters on a trip. And for the entire journey, for about four or five hours, they talked about nothing except the names of footballers. This one plays for this team. This one plays for that team. They know so much details that it is shocking how much money they earn, what cars they drive. And wallahi, there was a time I even overheard conversation of others many years ago. They even know the names of their girlfriends. How lowly can a person stoop? Yes, you can say, for argument's sake. Yes, they're considered stars in the eyes of human beings. They are considered successful in the eyes of human beings. Yes, they made their millions. They are famous. How about you, my young brother? What did you achieve in your life? Why would you lower your status in order to become a spectator in somebody else's life? Here you are talking about someone who doesn't even know that you exist. He does not even know your name, yet you know his name. You know so much about him, he knows nothing about you. Why won't you have aspirations so that people can talk about you? Long after you have died and disappeared from the face of this earth, people can talk about the legacy that you left behind. Why reduce yourself to a spectator and a fan in someone else's life? My brothers and sisters, without doubt, we have a crisis. And the crisis is our youth have no idea who's the role model. Mbappe, not a role model. Pogba, not a role model. These people who play football, they're not role models. Even if you wake up today in the morning and you read the name of Juan Pele and that he won the World Cup three times for Brazil and that he scored 1,200 goals in his lifetime, in the eyes of Allah, it counts for nothing. Haba and Mansura. This man did not die a Muslim. He died a disbeliever. And Allah knows where his, he will end up. Not here to give judgment, but Allah knows where he will end up. All this, they don't matter in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why for our youth, we choose to present in this khutbah, who are the real role models. And everybody needs a role model. 
That is the nature, including Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And who is greater than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? None. After Allah relayed to him the stories of the previous messengers, he said to him, These are the ones that Allah guided before you. Make them your example in life. Make them your role models in life. That is the whole reason why Allah told us the stories of the prophets in the Quran. Ali ibn Abi Talib, a youth growing up under the watchful eyes of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And when it came to making the ultimate sacrifice, he lay on the bed, on the bed of death. And he knows that Quraysh had prepared a squad to assassinate the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But when he knew that the death of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam means the end of the message, he decided to lie on that bed and took the ultimate sacrifice. Even though as a young person, he would definitely prefer to live, he would prefer life over death. But when it comes to Islam, everything is sacrificed, including life. Usama ibn Zayd, before the Prophet ﷺ died, he appointed him the commander of an army. And he was only a teenager. And some of the Sahabas, they did not like this. Why was he appointed over us as a commander? And this is an army that contains Abu Bakr and Umar. And the Sahabas who fought in Badr. And when this whispers spread, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he had to speak. And he said that you criticized before his leadership, the leadership of his father, Zayd. Wa'aymullah, he swears by Allah. Usama ibn Zayd is born a leader. He's a commander. And in addition to that, he says his father, Zayd was one of the most beloved people to me. And him is one of the most beloved people to me after his father. And that is why this man, Usama ibn Zayd, he was given the title Al-Hib ibn Al-Hib. The beloved one, son of the beloved one. Mu'ad ibn Jabal, radiyallahu anhu ardah. This man, when he was young, and he was always young and youthful until he died, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, look at this honor. He takes his hand and he says, Ya Mu'adh, Wallahi inni la uhibbuk. O Mu'adh, by Allah, I love you. Imagine such an honor, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, to say to you that he loves you. Mu'adh ibn Jabal, according to this testimony of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is the most knowledgeable of this ummah in matters that are halal and haram. A'lamu hadihi al-ummah bil halal wal haram is Mu'ad ibn Jabal. Was Mu'ad in his 40s and 50s? No! He was a young person, barely young, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave him that testimony. And in addition to that, he says to the Sahaba, "Istaqri'u al-Qur'an min arba." Learn to recite the Quran from four. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Salim Mawla bi Hudayfa, Ubay ibn Ka'b, and Mu'ad ibn Jabal. Mu'ad ibn Jabal was sent as an ambassador of Islam. He was sent to Yemen in order to invite them to Tawheed, to La ilaha illallah. Ya Mu'adh, innaka ta'ti qawman ahla kitab, falyakun awwal ma tad'uhum ilayhi, shahadat an la ilaha illallah. O Mu'adh, you will go to the people of the book, and so let it be that the first thing you invite them to is la ilaha illallah. Today, my brothers and sisters in Islam, there is not a single person over the centuries till this day that is a Muslim in Yemen that prays, that fasts, that recites the Quran, that goes for Hajj, that performs i'tikaf, that remembers the name of Allah. Illa wa hum fi Mu'ad ibn Jabal. 
except they are all recorded in the good deeds of Mu'ad ibn Jabal. How old was Mu'ad ibn Jabal when he died? He was only 35 years old when he died. Yet he left a legacy for this ummah. If you look beyond and you look to the Indian subcontinent, what is known as India and Pakistan and Bangladesh, you will find that the people there used to worship statues, used to worship Buddha and other different forms of nature. Until a young person by the name Muhammad ibn al-Qasim al-Thaqafi, he led an army and took Islam to the Indian subcontinent. And today, the hundreds of millions of Muslims in India and Pakistan and Bangladesh, they are all recorded in the virtues of Muhammad ibn al-Qasim al-Thaqafi. And he was only 17 years old when he led the army. We have great people in this ummah. Everybody has heard about Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. The one that some of our scholars, they said, he is Khamis al Khulafa al Rashidin. If a person would be given the honor, the title, the fifth of the guided Khulafa, it would be Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. All the scholars have agreed that the father was influenced by none other than his teenage son. Abdul Malik ibn Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, and he was only 16 years old. This is the man who inspired his father to greatness. Al Imam Malik ibn Anas, the one that was given the title Imam Darul Hijrah, the Imam of the abode of Hijrah, which is Medina. Imam Malik was given a unanimous verdict that he has qualified to give fatwa when he was only 21 years old. 40 of the scholars of Medina, min ahl al-ama'im, they said to him unanimously, balaghta ya Malik, you have reached the, the right time to give fatwa and pass this knowledge. Al-Imam Bukhari, that great Imam, he authored his book, Kitab al-Tariq, when he was only 18 years old. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala, when he was a young boy, every day on his way to go to the madrasa where he would learn deen, on his way, he would encounter an elderly Jewish man. And this Jewish man would ask him questions. And the young boy was very intelligent. So he would answer his questions, and then he would be on his way to go and seek knowledge. And every day this elderly Jewish man would be standing on, on his path and ask him questions until he removed, he removed all the doubts in the, heart, in the heart of this elderly Jewish man and he accepted Islam. If an elderly man would accept Islam at the hands of a young boy, then how many people accepted Islam at the hands of Ibn Taymiyyah throughout his life? Ma'roof al-Karkhi. This man, when he was a child, he brought his father to the fold of Islam. His father became a Muslim through him when he was a young boy. Abu Abdullah ibn al-Jala, a young boy, one day he says to his parents something amazing. He says to his parents, Uhibbu an tahabani lillah. I want you, my parents, to give me as a gift to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dedicate my life to the service of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Kindi yahfadu al-Qur'ana bi'ashir qira'at wa huwa ibn ashir sinin. He memorized the Qur'an with all the 10 different variations of recitation and he was only 10 years old. This has never been recorded for anyone except him. This ummah, my brothers, it produced great people. But you know what? Its enemies does not want the youth to pay attention to this ones. They don't want their lives to become transformed into something meaningful. They just want them slaves of their desires. Youth who give such a hard time to their parents. They do not pray salah. You do not see them in the masjid except rarely. Or the occasional jum'ah you'll see them in the masjid. But besides that, they've been 
enslaved by their desires. Their main concern is in life is to take a picture and post it on Instagram and on other different social medias and see how many likes they get. That is all they care about in life. And that is why Ibn al-Qayyim says, aspiration or ambition is amazing. You have an ambition that reaches to the throne of Allah. And you have somebody's ambition, he, all he cares about is his image, what he looks like, so that he can take pictures and post them. He or she, I'm emphasizing, young men and women alike, this is their obsession in this day and age. To get 99 likes, 200 likes, because this will boost their ego. Is this what Allah Azza wa Jalla created you for? And remember my sister, my brother, whatever you post on social media, it will never become erased. For as long as technology exists, it will remain there. Al-Hasan al-Basri said, Rahimahullah, Tuba li unasin matu, wa matat ma'ahum sayyatuhum. Successful are the people who died, and when they died, they died with their sins. But he said, Wailun, thumma wailun, thumma wailun, liman matu, wa ma matat sayyatuhum. They died, but their sins never died. The things they posted on social media, yabqa shahidan alayhim ila yawm al qiyamah. Including their fingers. They will be questioned. And every part of the human body and its organs will speak yawm al qiyamah about what they used to do on the face of this earth. My young brother and sister, all you need in this life is only one like. You don't need likes of girlfriends and boyfriends. And this stupidity. That's not what you need. You only need one like. And that is the like of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah gives you his like. And you become something in his eyes. He will raise your status. And you will leave a legacy for human beings. Long after you have died, every time people mention your name, they will remember you in their dua. But these people, the so-called stars, the so-called things that people like to em Wallahi, they have gone to extremes. They even want to emulate their hairstyle. The footballer, he has a new hairstyle. And everybody wants to have the same. The footballer, he has a unique walking style and everybody wants to walk like him. Why would you not want to walk like Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He walked like a man. I'm not saying people should not practice or play sports. By all means, play sports. Be active. Be strong. Because this deen says, al mu'minul qawi the strong believer is more beloved by Allah than the weak believer. Practice sports, but have the intention that I am strengthening this body so that it can worship Allah for the longest. But in this day and age, it is a sad reality. As soon as a young person gets married, in no time, he has a belly. He looks like he's six months pregnant, والعياذ billah. And by the time they're in their 40s, they look like they're 60. And they're praying, sitting on chairs. And they can barely even bow down for ruku and sujood. And even when it comes to making wudu, they're suffering and struggling. And by the time he's 50, he's already on his way to India to replace body parts. He's gone for spare parts in India. This is sad. This is not the lifestyle of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He used to walk so fast that nobody could keep pace with him. You go to Mecca, go see that Gharu Hira up on the mountain. That is where he used to climb and meditate. Go to Medina. Every day after Asr, he walks from his masjid to Masjid Quba. 
And look at the mountain of Uhud. He climbs the mount of Uhud. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was lean meat. He had no fat on his body. That was his lifestyle. And that is the preferred lifestyle for this ummah. So young person, play sports. Be strong. But let not anything else distract you on your path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For Allah has destined you, my brother, my sister, for greatness. But if you choose to be enslaved by your desires, and your Snapchat, and your Instagram, and your life for social media, and these things, then unfortunately, unfortunately, أَفَمَنْ زُيِّنَ لَهُ سُوءُ عَمَلِهِ فَرَآهُ حَسَنًا Allah says, have you not seen the person whose evil deeds have been made to look beautiful in their eyes? They say, we're young. This is what young people do. This is part of being a youthful person. Who said so? Were this men that I not mentioned in the khutbah, were they not young people? Did they not have desires? But there's a time when everything is sacrificed. And because of that, you achieve greatness in life. But if you want, you want it all, then long time ago they said in Swahili, Mtakavyote hukosavyote. The one who wants it all, he loses out on all. You either become a slave of Allah, or you become a slave of your desires. Ibad Allah. Inna Allah amarakum bi amrin bada fihi bi nafsih. فقال عز من قائل عليم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وزد وانعم وبارك على عبدك ورسولك محمد وعلى آله وصحابته أجمعين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداءك أعداء الدين اللهم فرج هم المهمومين ونفس كرب المكروبين وقض الدين عن المدينين اللهم اشفي مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم ارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين اللهم اغفر لوالدينا اللهم اغفر لوالدينا وارحمهم كما ربونا صغارا اللهم اهد شباب المسلمين اللهم اهد شباب المسلمين اللهم اهد ابناء المسلمين وبناتهم اللهم ردهم اليك ردا جميلا اللهم حبب الينا الايمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره الينا الكفر والفسوق والعصيان واجعلنا من الراشدين اللهم ثبتنا بالقول الثابت اللهم ثبتنا بالقول الثابت اللهم توفنا مسلمين اللهم توفنا مسلمين والحقنا بالصالحين غير خزايا ولا مخذولين برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين عباد الله ان الله يامركم بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون واقم الصلاه